Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, saya Cikgu Fazli Bayu Sensei. Jangan lupa subscribe channel saya. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, today is the day 10 for movement restriction order or larangan pergerakan arahan larangan pergerakan uh, so I hope uh, all of us will be fine and let's pray for our country and all over the world uh, for this kind of pandemic COVID-19 uh, I hope uh, it will end soon Okay, uh, so today uh, I would like to continue our lesson for chapter 4 which is uh, chemical composition of the cell. The first subtopic for this chapter is 4.1 about water. Okay, uh, so our learning standard for this subtopic is uh, to describe the properties of water molecule. Uh, number two, uh, correlate the properties of water with its importance in the cell. Okay, uh, so in this uh, subtopic, uh, you will learn uh, four properties of water. The first one is about the polarity of water. Number two is about a specific heat capacity of water. Number three, cohesion of water molecules and number four is the addition of water molecules okay uh, the first characteristic of water is the polarity of water okay so water is uh, water is an inorganic compound which is consists of two elements uh, hydrogen and oxygen the ratio to hydrogen and one oxygen so the chemical formula for water is H2O H2O okay uh, why water is known as a polar molecules the first one is because uh, water molecule has uh, shared electron between oxygen so the oxygen element shared electron uh, with the hydrogen okay number two hydrogen will be attracted towards oxygen which is more electronegative so hydrogen has a positive ion and then oxygen has electronegative so the hydrogen ion will be attracted to the oxygen because of the oxygen has electronegative charge so electron of the uh, electron of the hydrogen will pull toward the oxygen so this polarity will produces hydrogen bonds between water molecules and allows water to act as a universal solvent okay why water is known as a universal solvent okay because water molecules allow solutes such as uh, glucose and electrolytes to be transported through the plasma membrane uh, into cell for biochemical reaction with the uh, polarity of the water okay uh, the second properties of water is water has a specific heat capacity the specific heat capacity of water is higher than other materials before I explain about specific heat capacity of water so you need to know what is the meaning of specific heat capacity okay uh, the specific heat capacity means the amount of heat needed 
to raise the temperature of 1 gram of substances into 1 degree Celsius. Okay. So, the specific heat capacity of water is 4.2 kilojoule per gram per Celsius. Okay, it means, so to increase 2 kilogram of water, we need double time of specific heat capacity, which is 8.4 kilojoule to increase 1 degree Celsius. Okay, let's compare the specific heat capacity of water with other substances. Okay, so water, specific heat capacity of water is 4.2 kilojoule per gram, per kilogram. Okay, 4.2 kilojoule per kilogram per Celsius. Okay, iron. Iron has 449 joule per kg per Celsius, which is lower than water. Okay, and then sand is 830 joule per kilogram per Celsius. And the oak timber is about 2.4 kilojoule per kilogram per Celsius. Okay, what is the special about uh, specific heat capacity of water? Uh, have you ever go to the beach? Okay, what will happen when you walk at the beach uh, on the afternoon? Okay, your foot will feel hot because the sand absorb heat okay so because the sand has lower heat capacity of heat so it will absorb faster absorb heat faster and release the heat faster okay so water has high heat capacity which is it can store or absorb more heat energy okay so this is very important for our body to maintain the temperature for optimum biochemical reaction. Okay, even though the outside temperature is high, but our body temperature will not increase according to the surrounding temperature because water inside our body can absorb and store the heat from the outside so our body temperature will not increase above than 37 degrees celsius okay uh, the high heat capacity of water need more energy to increase the temperature of water so if we want to increase the temperature of water we need to apply to uh, supply we need to supply more energy to the water to increase the temperature okay because the high specific heat capacity of water so water will remain in the liquid state okay liquid state uh, below than 100 degrees Celsius so you can refer to the graph provided here okay so uh, when the ice in the form of solid so the heat energy store is 2.06 joule per gram okay or uh, 2.06 kilo joule per kilogram okay and then when the water is melting okay the energy needed is 334 joule per gram and then to maintain the water into the state of liquid uh, it will use 4.18 joule per gram 
of 4.2 joule per gram. Okay, so when the water vaporizes, when the uh, temperature of water is above than 100 degrees Celsius, okay, so the energy that can store in the steam state ataupun gas or uh, in a gas state is only 2.02 joule per gram. Okay, properties number three is cohesion force of water. Okay, cohesion means the attraction, the force of attraction between the same molecule, which, is, which means uh, attraction between water molecules. Cohesion. Okay, so cohesion force between water molecules will hold the continuous column of water together, of water, uh, move when it moves up the xylem vessel. Okay, so cohesive force between water molecules hold the continuous column of water together. So when one molecule of water moves, it will attract another molecule to move along. The another molecule will attract another molecule. So it will cause the water remain in liquid form. For example, uh, the water can move along the xylem vessel because of the cohesive force. Because one molecule of water attracted another molecule of water together. So, the flow of water will continuous. Con the water will flow continuously. Okay, properties number four is the addition force of water. So addition and cohesion will work together. Okay, cohesion between water molecules, same molecules. Okay, but addition is the force of attraction between two different molecules. Okay, for example, water molecules tend to adhere to the walls of the xylem vessel when it moves in the xylem vessel okay so the as the sea force can support a considerable mass of water so cohesion and addition force when it work together it will produce capillarity capillary action in a tube so when we drink water using a straw so the water can move along the straw from uh, from the glass to the to our mouth okay by using the cohesion and addition okay cohesion of water between the water molecules and then uh, addition force is between water molecules and the wall of the straw okay let's make uh, a comparison between cohesion and addition Okay, the first one is uh, the meaning of cohesion and addition. Cohesion is the attraction force uh, between what more same molecules. Okay, and then addition is the attraction between different molecules. Okay, difference number two is cohesion is an intermolecular attraction, same molecule. Okay, and then addition is an intramolecular attraction, which means different molecules. Okay, cohesion force includes Van der Waals force and hydrogen bonding. Okay, and then addition is include allotrostatic attraction. So the example of cohesion force is the formation of water droplets on the surface tension of a liquid is due to the cohesion okay and then addition force and the example of addition force is the spreading of liquid on a solid surface is due to addition okay uh, so the conclusion for this subtopic is um, the properties of water helps uh, the water to play a vital role in living organism.
I think that's all for this time. Uh, so you can check your understanding by answering uh, the quiz. The link I provided uh, in the description. And also if you want to understand more about cohesion and uh, addition, you can check my previous video. Also, I put the link in the description. Okay. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.